Safari has always been the obvious choice of browser for the Apple platform. It offered better speed, better privacy, and better integration with the system than any competitor could possibly offer. Sure, there are situations where you might want to use something else such as Chrome, because unfortunately there are situations where some apps work better in Chrome nowadays, like most of Google's own apps and, well, many others. But really though, browsers have been really stagnant for the past 5 to 10 years. Besides that basic support of some web apps or jumping between different Chrome profiles, there has never really been a draw for me to jump to another browser. I mean, they're all the same, aren't they? There's not really that big of a difference between one browser and the next, and there hasn't been for the past decade or so. Well, that all changed last year. You see, there was this company called The Browser Company. Yes, that is their name. And in 2022, they began hyping Arc, which they said would revitalize the browser industry and be different than anything you've seen before. And I was curious about the hype, but thought, hey, you know, no. What needs to change about the browser? It's great the way it is. Well, I'm here to tell you six reasons why you should definitely switch to Arc today. I first tried Arc a couple of months ago, but it didn't really stick. Well, I decided to give it another go a couple of weeks ago, saying, hey, I'd sit down with Arc and use that as my only browser for two weeks and see how I felt at the end. It didn't take two weeks. It took one day, and I knew Arc was going to become my default browser everywhere. First up is the design. Arc is a beautifully made modern application that really gets the browser Chrome that is all the extra details, you know, the tab bar, the URL bar, the buttons and stuff like that, out of the way so that you can focus on the web page and the content itself. The browser company has done a phenomenal job of streamlining the interface, making it really nice and clean and getting all that junk out of the way only to be seen when you need it. And when you do need it, it can largely be found in one location, and that is the sidebar. You see, instead of the typical browser format with the URL bar and tabs all at the top in the vertical layout, it is instead presented horizontally on the left side of the window in what they call the sidebar. Now, over the past couple of decades, we have gotten used to having all of those controls at the top of the window. This will take some time for you to get over. I mean, we're fighting against decades worth of muscle memory here, but once you do, it is so much better for two reasons. First of all, most of us use landscape screens. Why take up precious vertical real estate when we can put all that content on the left side of the screen? Because frankly, most websites don't really need to be that wide, but they can certainly deal with more vertical real estate. The second thing that I really like about the design of the sidebar is it's only there when you need it. It's very easy to hide the sidebar completely in which the browser experience becomes basically just the web page itself and no additional Chrome whatsoever. Just a quick tab on Command S and it pops out the sidebar, Command S, and it hides it away again. It is fantastic. Before progressing to the other five reasons why you should really check out Arc, I want to talk a little bit more about the sidebar itself and the cool stuff that is in there. Because, well, frankly, everything is in the sidebar. The first of these that take up the bulk of the space are just the regular tabs. These are what you're used to that show up usually at the top of other browser windows. There's not much special about them. Well, there is, but we'll get to that in a later section. The second, just above these regular tabs, are pin tabs, and these are tabs that you want to always stick around in the sidebar. There are important things that are going on in your life right now. Say, for instance, you're taking an online cohort-based class, or you just want to remember to check out my YouTube channel in the future, you should definitely pin that tab. Then just above these are tiny little square icons that are your favorite tabs, and these are the most important of your tabs. These are the things that you check on all the time and want always quickly available. For me, these are mainly things like web applications such as Tana, Readwise Reader, or YNAP. There are a couple other differences between favorite and pin tabs that we'll get to in a later section, I believe section number three. Yes section number three. But for now, the other cool thing to know about favorite tabs is that they all have a hotkey. That is, you can press command plus number key to always switch to that favorite tab, no matter where you are in the browser. For someone who has come to rely very heavily on Tana, this means that Tana is always just a command one away from me. Now, this doesn't really fit into this section, but I don't really know where else to put it. I want to say that one thing that has been most surprising to me about Arc is just how well web applications feel within Arc compared to other browsers. Things like the aforementioned Tana, YNAB, Readwise Reader all work so much better in Arc than they do in any of the other browsers, and I think a large portion of that comes down to the fact that there is that minimal Chrome, so it feels like I am really interacting with just Tana when I'm working in Arc. 
so much so that I'm actually thinking for the first time of using Slack exclusively in the browser versus the native macOS application, which is something that I never would have considered before. More reasons on why I'm thinking about doing that in a later section. That brings us to feature number two, and that is auto-archived tabs. Now, throughout most of 2022, this was ARC's headline feature. You see, ARC will automatically archive all regular tabs that haven't been visited after a fixed period of time. I thought that this would be a feature that I would absolutely hate and would immediately disable it. I really love this. It's a great idea that is really well implemented. Right now I have it set so that if I don't visit a tab for 24 hours, that tab is automatically archived and gets out of my normal browser window. And as someone who is a self-admitted tab addict, I can honestly say this is really needed and I cannot believe I just admitted to that. You see, the cool thing is these tabs aren't just deleted, they are archived, which is a special section kept apart from the history, which you can open at any time and view any tab that was ever archived and exactly when it was so that you can quickly browse through that and reopen it if you remember that you need it. Now, as I said, I have mine set to 24 hours, but I think I'm actually going to revert that to the default of 12 hours because I love this feature so much and I've actually found myself wondering why I still have tabs open and why they haven't gone into the archive yet. Trust me, try this feature out. It's perfectly fine if you disable it later on, but give it a week, see if you like it. I think you might. Feature number three that makes Arc the killer new browser is Spaces. Now, you remember that sidebar that I told you about earlier? You could have more than one sidebar. In fact, you could have an infinite number of sidebars, and those are called Spaces. You can create one for every project or area in your life, and it is a really great way of organizing your browser life all within one window, not scatter off in a whole bunch of different browsers. Earlier I told you there were some additional differences between the tabs, and this is where they come into play. You see favorites, those most special tabs that are little squares at the top of the window, those automatically propagate across all the spaces. So if I have Tana in favorite spot one, it's gonna be in favorite spot one on all of my default spaces. Pin tabs, and then the regular tabs, they can be different across all the spaces. So say for instance, I'm working on a new YouTube video and I'm doing research, I can create a new space if I want for that and just store all the content and research ideas in regular tabs, or maybe create a pin tab for this channel dashboard right at the very top. All that will be kept isolated to that single space, allow me to quickly switch between different modes so I can better focus on what I want to be doing. To make this even better and help cue you in on what you want to do, each space can have a different theme applied to it so that you can visually at a quick glance know what you want to be working on just based on the color alone. Killer feature number four is cross computer sync that works really, really well. You see spaces, tabs, favorites, all of that are synced across all of your computers. Say for instance, I'm doing research on my desktop and I open up a new tab in the browser, but then realize I need to get going. I grab my laptop, head to the coffee shop, open up, and there in Arc is that new tab that I opened on the desktop. It's really, really cool. Now, sure, Safari has synced tab groups, which work okay, but the default tabs, the regular ones outside of the tab group, they don't sync at all, which I really never understood. Those are the ones that I want most to sync. Arc just does it and it does it really, really well. It is great being able to pick up where I left off no matter what device I'm on. Except my mobile devices, but they say that that is coming this year. Killer feature number five is profiles, which you can tie to an individual space. Like Chrome, you can create multiple profiles within Arc. You can think of profiles as little containers that encapsulate all of your internet presence into this one little siloed box. Now on Chrome, I use this so I could be signed into my Rescue Time Google account in one Chrome profile, and I could be signed into my Signum Google account in a different profile, and I could be signed into my YouTube account in a separate profile, all keeping them separate and isolated and frankly away from that horrible Google account chooser because it just doesn't work well if you have multiple accounts I, didn't. I really hate that thing. Well, in Arc, you can do the same thing. You can create multiple profiles, but you can tie them to an individual space, not a completely separate browser window. And that is really, really cool. Once again, it just keeps everything all together in one window if you want, and it just makes it nice and clean and well-organized and tidy. What I found works well for me is that I just have a personal space that includes the default profile of whatever I want in it. Then there's this rescue time space that includes everything I'm working on for rescue time tied to a rescue time profile, meaning that I'm signed into all of my rescue time accounts, but only in that space. 
I also have a Signum space tied to a Signum profile with the exact same things. All of my Signum accounts are signed in, but only in that space. And then I have a YouTube space with a special profile for there signed into all my accounts for this YouTube channel. And it just works really, really well, being able to quickly swipe between different spaces all within the same window and switch between accounts by doing that. This has really simplified my workflow and has made things much easier and gotten rid of my need for the open in app, which I talked about up here. Everything I've talked about so far wouldn't be enough to get rid of the open in app. However, killer feature number six does that, and that is called Little Arc. Well, what is Little Arc? Well, Little Arc is like baby arc. It's a little tiny arc window. Okay, it can be as big as you want. It's just not the full browser experience. It's just a single window. It's just a single tab, no sidebar, that opens up anytime you click a link on your Mac. Say, for instance, someone from Signum decides to email a link to a Google Doc that we're working on. So I open up the email, I click the link, and up pops Little Arc. This is another one of those things that I thought would be complete marketing nonsense, but works really, really well in practice. It allows you to quickly read, interact with, or do whatever you want on that page without, you know, taking it to your normal arc window, unless you want to. If you do want to, there's this little button up in the top right that allows you to open up fully in arc. The cool thing about this is up there in the upper right, you can choose which space you want to send it to. So no more of this nonsense with this Google account cannot open this Google Doc. Please reach out to the sender, blah, 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 blah. Instead, you can just say, hey, instead of opening this in the rescue time profile, open this in the Signum profile. And it switches it right over to the Signum profile and I have full access right there. Completely eliminated the need for open in. Those six reasons alone were enough to convince me by the end of a single day that I was switching to Arc full time. However, there are a whole bunch of other features that I don't really have time to discuss in full detail today. But just to quickly go over them, there is a command bar. If you paid attention at all in 2022, you realize that most productivity apps nowadays have a command bar. You just press a quick hotkey and type in something and the app will do it for you. Arc is no exception. Once you get used to it, just a quick command T will open up the command bar, allowing you to do whatever you want within the arc. Open up a new tab, move something between spaces, everything can happen within the command bar. Then there's also boosts. Boosts are a really convenient and built-in way of customizing the style or scripts on any page. So say for instance, I wanna customize how Tana looks and make it really my own. I can just create a custom boost for Tana, adding the styling that I want. And anytime I go to Tana, I'll see that instead of the defaults. Then there are notes and easels built in, which are a bit like the Freeform app that I talked about in prior videos from Apple. Um, won't get into those now, but they are a really cool way of collecting information from all over the web if you're working on a research project. The final grab bag item that's really cool is there is built-in support for split views that can once again be opened instantly with that command bar. All these things have combined to make Arc a truly revolutionary browser. Believe it or not, the browser company really has come through with their promise to rethink the browser and give us something new for the decade to come. I hope you'll check it out. Talk to you later. Bye. In this video up here. No. This has really simplified one of my big frustrations. Nah.